area the base times height. So area the base, that teeny little piece right there. And what's this measure here? That means it will be 0.5 times 0.5. Thank you for watching what you say are your most important basic human rights in case another group uses them. What we're going to do is we are going to create a pH gradient. We're going to use universal indicator. So angles are created by an imaginary line called the normal. Well, what's the normal? The angle created by the incoming Anybody light. Anybody else have seen movies where there's good examples of genocide scenes, moments that stick in your head that help you define for yourself what that... The first time I walked in here, I couldn't believe that it was a high school. And it, it, it felt really, really warm and inviting and comfortable. And you have a huge variety of options in a place like this. Explanation shows clear understanding of the optics concepts so studied in this term. If you want to follow the angle of the trajectory of the state. I'd absolutely find this a wonderful building because of the lighting, the windows, the structure. Classrooms have outside windows and they have inside windows. When you have a wireless laptop environment, you basically can work anywhere. It makes you want to learn, and you feel free. I love our school. Our colors are like so, man, like you just walk in our school and it's like, wow. It's kind of like it's a house to me. And it's like, um, with carpet and all this stuff, it like makes you feel like you're at home and you are in a safe environment to learn. Your wow, I never thought I'd have an experience like this to actually see a building like this and be in it every day. And then right as I was thinking that, I'm like, whoa, I almost just forgot that this was school. I went to see the boys' baseball team on Saturday for their uh, game at George Washington. And I have to say, if you haven't seen the boys' baseball team, I was very impressed. So congratulations to them. I think one of the most exciting things that we have going here is that we are truly a diverse community. And that diversity spans economics, ethnicity, academic preparation, gender. And it gives us the opportunity to really build a truly diverse community where all students are sharing a set of common values and uh, sharing a common vision for where they're going, which is college. Our students today are roughly 65% minority and 45% low income. This is the most uh, ethnically and economically diverse school in the state. We have everything from homeless kids to uh, kids whose parents have private jets. We have well over 40% representation of girls. In fact, our ninth grade class for this coming fall is over 50% girls. So young girls look around and they see other girls just like themselves doing well in science, mathematics, engineering, technology, language arts, foreign language, and they're not, they're not um, underrepresented. It's so open that there's always someone around. We're so close to our classrooms. I'm right there, so close to the pod itself that I can hear exactly what the students are saying all the time. So we're always together. There's not a huge separation between teachers and students. So it, it, I feel like I'm kind of part of the, the community of students as well. You know everyone. Everyone knows everyone. Even the ninth graders that I don't have in class, I know who they are and they know me. And they say hi to me in the hallway. Hi, Miss Ray. They look at us as more of a part of the team. And rather, I'm the teacher, you're the student, I do this, you do this. That means all of your answers are going to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're just if they like, know that I'm kind of learning, then they're willing to teach. And so they'll want to show, well, if we say it this way, this will work. And okay. Does that help? <laughs> all right. They also teach us about their teenage culture, <laughs> which is kind of nice. I love being at this school, and I think one of the things that really makes it special is the sense of community that we have here. It's very strong among both the faculty and the students, but among the faculty, we also get to really see each other a lot. So we're not just in our individual classrooms. This is the one I want to post. 
The building is basically just devised as spaces to teach in different ways. We have the classroom spaces, which are somewhat traditional, but there's a lot more daylight. Uh, they open up. We have the studio environment that flows to the outdoors. Uh, and then we have progressively larger scaled spaces, less and less structure, but still can be used for instruction. So that as they use the school differently over time, the school's flexible. There's sockets everywhere so that we can plug up our laptops. I really like using the laptops because it allows me to work where I want to. A lot of the times when I'm in the classroom and I hear something interesting, I can look further into it because I've got a laptop right in front of me and I plug in whatever I want to research and it's right there. And you learn a lot more about the concepts that they're teaching because they're accessible. And how is that going to help for your paper? Well, that's going to tell me like they... I think the space here is definitely designed well for implementing a rigorous curriculum. The grouping that it allows us to do, the individualization that the building allows us to do, really helps in that area. Where does it actually say that? I can spend time for students that need extra work and extra help to raise them to the same level of rigor as the students who can do it much more quickly on their own. Okay, that would be the quote you could take out of that. And that individualization is, is literally built into the design of the, of the building. Three. We use two grams, remember, because we like weighed it out and measured it. So it's 102 times, did you get 5.5? 11.6. Maybe you did. <laughs> Kids today expect to be much more actively involved in their learning. I keep track. Nine. And so the learning environments have to be able to support active involvement in learning, which is more than just minds on. It's minds on, hands on, bodies on, kids actively doing and constructing knowledge. Drivers. Are you ready? Yeah. On your mark, get set, go. Yeah, go Aaron. Oh, 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 we got to oh, Somebody get the ball. <laughs> Their button's too high. Goal. Well done, well done. It's a cool school. That's what we wanted to have. It was a really cool school. And we wanted kids to want to go to school. And that's really, I think, to me, again, it's half the battle. I think that if kids want to be there, they're going to want to learn, and they're going to want to spend time there. And it's important for quality environments to be able to enable that to happen. When we started the project, we interviewed a whole bunch of students and we asked them what would they want to see the school to be. And every single student said, cool. You know, they use the word cool a lot, teenager, and it says, we want a cool school. They're very playful, so they want an environment that is playful, uh, that is not restricted to a certain extent. It's you no know, giving them a little of freedom, a little bit of freedom, a little bit of flexibility helps. They would think that this is an important place to be, and they're not going to mess it up. All along the hallways, there's like chairs and stuff, like cushions, and like where you can just um, sit with your friends and do homework, or sit with your teachers and like get extra help. And it's beautiful. It's like take your breath away, beautiful, because like this is stuff that you see on TV, never like in real reality. For high school teenagers, I mean, we're teenagers. It's a little bit like the word onomatopoeia, you know, words that sound like what they mean. That building is a school building that demonstrates, it, it shows off what it's trying to teach. If you're trying to teach uh, math and science and technology to kids, you might as well be able to have exposed ductwork and, and electrical conduits and be able to see actually how the structure of the building works because it's it's going to do nothing less than stimulate the, the curiosity of the kids. One of the things that, that I felt was a problem is the way 
that science is perceived by both the kids and their parents. And I felt that we had to have a place um, where kids could feel good about coming here and feel good about being involved in the sciences. Yeah, okay, so I'm coming around still, just if you feel like you don't understand or you have questions, let me know. Don't do this. Yeah. I spent a lot of time looking at other schools, and one of the things I discovered was that schools that I thought were really exemplary, um, the kids really took care of the building. And given that they took care of the building, I didn't think we needed to have sort of prison quality materials inside the building. I thought that uh, if the school was great that the kids would respect the building. That gave us a lot more freedom in terms of what we could do. It also, because we were building to a very tight budget, um, allowed us to use some materials such as storefront glass. We were able to make considerable savings and, and we came in um, on a square foot basis below what a standard building in Denver Public Schools would cost. A lot of times with schools, especially larger institutional schools, it's all about the square footage. We've got to get a lot of classrooms in and they have to be this big and all these kind of things where if you took a little bit off, instead of having a 900 square foot classroom, maybe you went to 875, you could probably save enough money to increase the quality of materials and the design aspect that you're dealing with in the school. So that's where the value really comes into play. You can create different environments within the school by just A, either moving an operable wall, or B, pulling a curtain, or C, just walking out a door. Um, those are the kind of things that we look at for flexibility because the curriculum may change in five years. You know. I just walked in here and I was just blown away by how it looked. Like, there's no ceilings, you can see everything. And then the walls up there aren't painted so you can see the insulation and then the girders are out and it just really like got me interested in the building and like if uh, I want to type on my laptop on my lap instead of on the table just put it on my lap or come out here to the pods and get some silence I like learning in the pods and just how our school was built so I can go in the pod and I will see everybody who walks past I have to restart it all like, oh, can you help me with this? They don't mind walking over because, I mean, why wouldn't you want to sit on the nice couches that we have here? They're just sittable. Each classroom has a door outside. So sometimes, like, even during math class, we'll go outside. And I love that. Students will finish a test. I can take them out to the pod area and say, okay, I would like you to work on this while everybody else is finishing up or I can start them independent study. So just that space very close, but very separate, allows me to do a lot of different things. We walk around and like, study the anatomy of the school sometimes, especially in math, like, the, like trying to find the area of certain sections of the pipes. You know, the building, the fact that columns and beams and ventilation systems even our all open allows us to discuss how engineering principles work, how load is transferred from the roof of the building all the way down to the foundations. And it's a very concrete piece of material that they can look at. What should this data look like? Okay. Do you think that given velocity, you should be able to find length, height, how does the angle measure in? Does that make sense? All right. Three, two, one. Is that a measurement? 13 feet, 160 You can be yourself, and you don't have to worry about others. You can excel because that's the cool thing to do here. What would make this easier to understand? I rarely go into the school that it doesn't bring tears to my eyes. So what can we do to make this easier? It, it so uh, warms my heart to see the kind of learning that's happening there and to see these kids who didn't imagine themselves as achievers just doing amazing work. They were the highest performing ninth grade class in the city of Denver um, last year. And particularly our numbers 
when you look at low-income students and you look at African-American and Hispanic, um, we have done very well. We started with about 50 kids below grade level out of 130 in our first year, and we ended up, in terms of standardized tests, with our math scores being five times that of the public school district, all our scores being close to double the state scores. So, so far we've had spectacular academic results. But I'm going to start this morning um, with a community shout out because you are going to find in Newsweek magazine in their great American high schools issue, your school. So congratulations, it's uh, nice to see that all of your hard work is being recognized not only locally now, but on a national level. Um, so let's give that a round of applause this morning. It's a positive place to learn and to work. And I don't think that we have to have a traditional school that's like a box. You can have open spaces. You can have outdoor courtyards. You can have colors on the walls, and it's not distracting. I think when kids come in here, they feel they're important. I think the teachers feel they're important. It's an attitude changer when you walk into the building. I mean, that's what school should be. Uh, let's have a great day, advisor dismissed. And school should be about building a building that doesn't cost any more, but is better adapted to teaching and to kids than the traditional building. And the impact on, of a school like this on the rest of the district is more than just the kids that are at that school. It has a, a ripple effect that, that I think benefits every high school student in the district.